Hello and welcome to another episode of uh, Talking Politics on the Hindus YouTube channel uh, where we look at what is making news uh, in domestic politics. I am Ms. Tula Heba, the political editor of the Hindu and as always I will be going through the episode with you all, uh, a chosen topic uh, from all the various things that have happened across the country in domestic politics. Now dates for Lok Sabha elections have been declared a long old season, the second longest in fact since India's independence and 44 to 47 days. Now the longest stretch before this was the first ever elections that were held after independence. That was the first time Indians kind of exercised their franchise. Uh, this was between the years of 1951 to 52. It began September 1951, ended in February of 1952. But uh, the caveat there is that those were uh, elections for both uh, the central government and uh, state assemblies that took place in that long stretch of period. Now, there's been, there's been a lot of talk about whether there is a need for stretching out this period, whether it's being done to uh, favor somebody or the other or the logistics of doing something. The Indian uh, elections has become so out of hand that it will take, you know, 45 uh, to 48 days or 44 to 47 days. All of that, of course, has been discussed. And as soon as uh, this election cycle got underway, we had a lot of arrests that have happened. K. Kavita of the BRS and Arvind Kejriwal, Delhi Chief Minister, got arrested on Thursday night in the liquor uh, policy case. All of that is being discussed threadbare on the Hindu's website. I'll try and include some show notes or you can just go do a Google search on it. We have a comprehensive package uh, running on uh, uh, that particular uh, uh, case as do we have a real good set of stories for the electoral bonds now all of these issues have been done to death now what do I do what do I how do I search for a good topic to talk about well uh, as I said before the elongated poll season will run according to its own logic but the BJP uh, the party that I have covered for the last two decades uh, despite the si two single party majorities that it has posted in 2014 and 2019 elections has basically been trying to power through and uh, uh, seal up uh, alliances and to add more and more partners to the NDA. Recording this video, the BJP had announced seat sharing with the Janata Dal United, the Lok Jan Shakti Party, the Hindustan Awam Mocha, and the Rashtriya Lok Manch in Bihar, where Telugu Desam Party and the Janasena Party in Andhra Pradesh, the Janata Dal S in Karnataka, the Patal Makkal Kachi in Tamil Nadu, and is said to be in talks with the Biju Janata Dal in Odisha and Shiromani Akali Dal in Punjab. Now, the other, the last two that I've mentioned, they haven't been pulled off yet. So please do bear that in mind when I am talking about uh, what I, what the BJP hopes to gain from those alliances, because they may be pulled off or not, and we'll have to see uh, developments going ahead. Uh, in the next week or so. Now, the first question to ask in terms of why the BJP, where Prime Minister Modi, Prime Minister Modi is talking about 370 seats, Bar, Modi, Sarkar again, Char So Par, etc., etc. Why is it that the BJP is looking for allies? What is it that the BJP, which is a formidable strength in Northern and Western India, uh, enough to get, as I said, two full majorities in the Lok Sabha in the past, what is it that they they hope to gain from these alliances? Now, some partners of the BJP uh, helped the party reach the halfway mark via alliances in 2014 and some others in 2019. Allies such as the TDP left the NDA in 2018 before the last general elections and others in 2020 like the Shiromani Akali Tal. Now, the JDS was uh, last an ally with the BJP in the early 2000s, but the BJD broke its alliance uh, with the BJP in 2009. Uh, what is it that is now making the BJP open its doors to these parties? In all these uh, cases and accumulation of allies, the BJP has signaled that it is determined to poll as many votes as possible, having set a goal of crossing 50% of the vote share and 370 seats 
that uh, to win on its own 400 seats for the NDA. As I said, Teen So Sattar, according to Prime Minister Modi, for the BJP alone and 400 for the NDA alliance. That is a simple explanation of this kind of primitive accumulation, as we call it in anthropology, of allies. The more intricate uh, explanation lies in the multiplier effect of BJP tie-ups with regionally strong parties and combined with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's national appeal at the helm of the BJP. For example, the BJP and the Telugu Desam Party. Now, these two parties were allies back in 1996 when the TDP leader Chandrababu Naidu was actually the convener of the NDA and Prime Minister Vajpayee was at the helm of affairs at the centre. Later, in 2014, uh, again, uh, these two parties allied together and uh, they uh, fought in alliance, as I said, and the TDP won 15 out of Andhra Pradesh's 25 seats and with a vote share of just over 40%. The BJP won two seats with a vote share of 7%, which, if you have been covering BJP as long as I have been, is a bit of a miracle for the BJP in Andhra Pradesh. Five years later, in 2019, when the two parties fought separately after the TDP had left the NDA, the TDP vote share remained intact, but its seats dropped to just three. That its conversion rate in terms of multiplier effect just didn't work. There was a wave in favor of Jagan Mohan Reddy's. So his voters as well came out in full strength. The BJP drew a blank in that election. It didn't win a single Lok Sabha seat and it garnered only a 0.98% of the vote share. And in fact, in Andhra Pradesh, Nota got 1.5% uh, of the vote share. And so BJP actually got less than that. So it makes sense for the BJP to go ahead and uh, come together in an alliance with Chandra Babu Naidu, even if there is no wave in front of Mr. Naidu, he's, his vote share is intact and in some seats, it may help the BJP either get more vote share or actually outright win seats in a state where it drew a blank in 2019. Now, the TDP for its part requires the support of the BJP strong at the center against, against the Jagan Mohan Reddy led YSRCP. The, the, the two parties have been at loggerheads. And uh, uh, as you know, Mr. Naidu had been arrested in the past. He's out on bail at the moment. And there was a lot of fighting at the local level that has been happening. The TDP uh, party headquarters had been attacked in Andhra. So all of that uh, uh, is there. The TDP feels that with the support of the BJP, which is uh, likely going to form the government at the center, according to their calculations, they will get some sort of a protection during the election season where their own party workers will not be hounded out. Now, uh, the case of the Biju Jantadal uh, uh, is even more interesting. Now, the two parties, the BJP and the Biju Jantadal BJD, were allies since 1998. In the 2000 assembly polls in the state, the alliance came to power with the BJD at 68 seats and the BJP at 38 seats. This was a 147 seven member assembly and therefore the two parties could easily form a government. They got a majority in the assembly and they both followed anti-Congress uh, politics. So it looked like a good fit between the two. Then the assembly elections uh, then were called in 2004, which is, you know, that it became co-terminus with the Lok Sabha election, which was also good for the alliance, uh, which again formed the government uh, at the state and the BJD won 11 out of the 21 seats. Uh, going to the Lok Sabha and the BJP won seven seats. Now, uh, Biju Janta, the trouble started when the Biju Janta Dal severed ties with the BJP prior to the 2009 state assembly elections. Uh, this action was taken in part because the BJP was thought to have had ties with organizations and individuals involved in deadly riots in 2007 and 2008 against Christian minorities living in central Odisha and also because the two parties could not come to an agreement on how the seats were to be allocated in the elections. In that election, uh, the breaking or parting of ways paid off for the BJD. The, it won uh, 14 seats out of the 21 in the 2009 uh, Lok Sabha elections. 
And in fact, in uh, the 2014, which was the Modi wave election, BJD got 20 out of the 21 seats. In 2019, however, BJP seemed to be making another comeback in Odisha and it won eight seats on its own, even though the Biju Janta Dal uh, formed the government uh, at the assembly level. And But the BJD seats came down from 20 to 12. So it was basically largely seen that the people of Odisha had understood what a double ticket election was. So they were going to vote for Naveen Patnaik to be chief minister, but they were giving seats to the BJP and to Prime Minister Modi for the Lok Sabha election. So the alliance at the moment, which was being discussed, uh, therefore was, uh, it was hoped that it would help both parties maximize the vote share and victories. But the state unit of the BJP, however, feels that having emerged as the principal opposition to the BJD in the state, the alliance would hurt their prospects. And in fact, they say that these 10, 12 days that have passed since News first broke out that such an alliance was being discussed. The party has lost a lot of momentum. And uh, as of, as I said, as of recording this episode, there was no scene of uh, basically this uh, alliance being announced. It could uh, be announced going ahead into the future, but negotiations are still happening. Now, uh, uh, the BJP at the local level feels that the anti-incumbency of the Naveen Patnaik uh, government's five terms uh, could uh, uh, hamper the BJP's prospects going ahead. They feel they could do better on their own. The high command doesn't think so, and that's where it lies. But in terms of just sheer arithmetic, of course, uh, it seems to make sense uh, to have this kind of an alliance at this point. But as I said earlier, also in previous episodes of Talking Politics, the arithmetic is, of course, important, but other considerations are also there. In Odisha and in Andhra Pradesh, as in Tamil Nadu, uh, BJP is, uh, as I have already said before, uh, keen to shed its image as a party strongest only in the north and in the west. And it wants to put up a strong All India showing for what is an epoch making election for Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He was seeking a third successive term. And if he wins, he will equal the record of uh, the only other Prime Minister of India to have achieved this, that was our first Prime Minister, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. He won the 52 election, 57 election, and the one in 62. Uh, and he died in office in uh, 1964. So, but he won those three elections on the trot. He was the only Prime Minister to have ever done that. If Prime Minister Modi wins this time, he will be this, only the second Prime Minister to have done it. Now, for the TDP, as I said, another stint in the opposition could mean that the decimation of its organization uh, could happen and it needs all the help it can get to keep the YSRCP at bay. For the BJD again, it's not just arithmetic. They are going through a succession issue uh, with uh, major signals there that uh, Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik is looking at his former, uh, you know, aide, bureaucratic aide turned politician VK Pandian as a successor. He feels that the BJP alliance could provide a good cocoon to effect this change. Um, uh, similarly, in Punjab, the tie-up with Shiromani Akali Dal, which has managed to win back all its dissenting factions to reunite under Subbir Singh Badal, the combining of the Sikh Panthik vote and the Hindu vote carried by the BJP will make a difference to both parties on several seats. And it may also ameliorate some of this uh, um, rancor between the BJP and farmers groups in Punjab. Now, some alliances have been tied up, others are in the works, and in case of the BJP, as I said, sorry, the BJD, as I said, at the time of recording, the jury was still out. What it shows is a BJP determined not just to add on subnational narratives to its national central appeal, maximizing votes across the country, but also to play to a maximalist position in a poll which a majority thinks is done and dusted except the designated victor, which is the BJP, uh, they don't think so and they don't want to leave anything to chance. That is what it seems to me uh, sitting here and observing it all. Uh, uh, and of course, talking to you all about it on this episode of Talking Politics. Uh, in case you like, uh, like this episode and want uh, alerts uh, for more such material, please do subscribe to the Hindus. YouTube channel. As for me, 
I will be seeing you next week.